All right, everybody, welcome to episode 45 of the Pixel Power Podcast. And in this episode, we're doing something unique. I am live on YouTube Live while I record this. So if you're listening on Anchor or if you're listening using your favorite podcast catcher, know that this episode was recorded on Saturday. Let's see, the date was April 11th. Uh, Hopefully it did not take long for me to get the audio from the Uh, YouTube live video and converted that and got that out to you. I'm hopeful that I can get that done uh, within 24 hours. So I decided to try uh, YouTube live just to try a different medium. I've been having a lot of fun uh, during our COVID um, sequestering to try out new technologies. And one of the things I've been dying to try out is YouTube live to understand how it works, uh, what you can do with it. And I've uh, been tying it to OBS studio So if you are watching, you will notice over here I have, and for those of you listening, you can't see where I'm pointing, but I'm pointing to a chat room that's available. I do not expect anybody to be in the chat room for this episode because I did not let anybody know when I was recording. And if somebody comes in, it'll probably be a random listener. Uh, So that is available. And I'm thinking about doing this in the future where I actually announce that the episode is live. So a little different, uh, tone today. It's all live. Now I may do some editing of the audio for the um, podcast version, but by and large, you're, you're hearing a live episode of the podcast right now. Of course, when you record, they're always live. So not that that's anything unique, but it is uh, different for me because I'm trying to maintain or operate two things at a time. I'm trying to make sure I have good, consistent audio, but I'm also trying to watch the video and I find myself looking back and forth on monitors and uh, seeing what I look like, uh, which is weird for me. But, uh, you know, through COVID-19, I've been looking at myself a lot in virtual meetings, which we'll talk about. So episode 45 is about, um, it's a little bit of a catch up with you. I've been away for about a month and I thought what we would do is talk about how COVID-19 has kind of affected uh, my life, uh, what I've been doing, but also how do Pixel devices, the Pixel book, the Pixel slate, the Pixel phone kind of contribute to that new work environment, that new personal environment? How, how are we using our Pixel devices to make COVID-19 sequestering and social distancing uh, something we can all tolerate because it has been tough. So I've got a few thoughts here. We will not have the addendum segment of the episode today. We generally have an addendum at the end, but this whole episode is basically an addendum. So I will um, uh, uh, veer away from the addendum this week. The other thing that I'd like you to know is um, one of the other reasons I'm trying YouTube Live is I'd like to see if I can build additional listeners. And I know YouTube is a great way to get people excited about the content you're producing. So. I've, I've got kind of a goal in mind for where I would like to see the podcast at the end of the year. And that, that goal will decide whether I kind of continue the podcast or not. But I am giving it, you know, another good uh, six to nine months to figure out if I want to continue that or if I want to look at a little something different and try some other media. Uh, many of you know, I've already been experimenting with some video on YouTube uh, around uh, using Arduinos, for instance. And I've been doing that in conjunction with my class and as part of my blog. Uh, So that's been like double usage for that, but I've also been playing around with some technology. So if you wanna check that out, that is over at stephencombs.com. It is new, Uh, I'm I'm getting familiar with video. One of the tools I'm using is DaVinci Resolve, uh, which has proved to be an amazing video editor. There's so much there. Uh, Sometimes I, I load that and I'm kind of at a loss where to begin but it is allowing me to start to edit video so that it's a little more professional looking. Um, So I'm looking forward to learning more about that. And I think that's one of the first things that COVID has done. Um, You know, we work from home, um, but we, at least in my case, there's no travel. So I'm getting a couple hours back in my day uh, because I don't have to sit in a car going to meetings or going to work. So I'm using taking that time to learn about new things, learn about new technologies. And I think that's that's one of the opportunities we have right now. And I think one of the other things that's interesting is we're learning that this technology, these virtual meetings, uh, the video editing, the audio editing, webcams, microphones, I think what we're finding is these will all probably be things that we will continue to use on the tail end of COVID. 
And uh, we're probably all learning how to use those more effectively to be more productive in the workspace. So we want to talk about that a little bit. So let me go into my show. Episode is 00 or 0045. So pixelpowerpodcast.com slash 0045. And those should be up online. If you're watching on YouTube, those should be up uh, online in the next 24 hours. And for regular podcast listeners, they're always available as soon as the podcast is delivered. So let me talk a little bit about how the coronavirus has changed my life. As most of you know, I work in higher education and uh, the campus closed, uh, I think we're going on our fourth week now. And uh, even before that, we were practicing social distancing and had started to think about uh, using virtual technologies. Uh, we at the college where I work, we use Zoom and Microsoft Teams. Now, Zoom has been interesting. If you've been tracking Zoom, Zoom has had uh, some really bad press about security, and we still use it. We have started to password protect our Zoom meetings, but by and large, for my team, I like to use Microsoft Teams. And Microsoft Teams has a much different interface. Zoom will allow you to see everybody who's connected. One of the things I love about Microsoft Teams video is that it will only show you the top or the last four people who have presented. And I really like that. So I'm attending regular meetings daily. I sit, as a matter of fact, I'm sitting right here in this seat. If you're watching, uh, you can see where that is, or you've seen some of my videos. I sit in the same place that is what I call my geek cave. Now, one of the things I was kind of excited about COVID is I have spent some time kind of building my geek cave, as we call, as I call it. And this is where I have my 3D printer. I have, uh, as I look around, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different, seven different screens here. Uh, so I have multiple monitors. I have TVs. It really is uh, pretty technologically advanced. I have a 3D printer here. I have some audio editing equipment. I have a mixing board. I have everything I need to have an amazing virtual office. And what I'm noticing is I wish I had some of this in my office back at the college. And when I go back, I may have to think about trying to get some of that because I think, again, that we're going to be using some of this technology in the long run. And of course, playing a big part of that are my Pixel Slate, my Pixel Book. Uh, I have a Lenovo tab here that I'm showing on the screen if you're watching. Uh, this is the uh, Pixel Slate that I use regularly, and I have that in front of me. Of course, this is the Pixel Power Podcast, so I have to have Pixel devices. I also have my Pixel Book which is the silver and white pixel book. That has been an amazing device as I've been kind of sequestered here. Uh, and then of course we can't forget the most important device of the day probably is my pixel four, which I'm showing on the screen for those watching. And each of those devices I use differently. Um, Primarily, I use I do I do have um, a Mac set up here for video. That's what I'm using to to broadcast uh, with OBS Studio. And the only reason I don't use Chrome OS for that is because it does OBS Studio doesn't work for Chrome OS. If I could move to all Chrome OS, I would. But there's still things that I need a Mac for, uh, and this video is one of those. And and even audio recording and editing is so much easier on the Mac. I'm hopeful that over time, Chrome OS and our Pixel devices will get better at these things. And as they build out the Linux piece, I think we're going to start to see that more and more. And maybe one day we'll get to that. But what I love about having these multiple devices is it allows me to participate in these virtual meetings in different locations. Yeah, sometimes I just want to be here. I want to have my headphones on. I want a good microphone. But sometimes I want to be out on the lawn or standing up. And that's where I'll break out my Pixel phone. I will break out my Pixel Buds and oops, I just hit the microphone, but uh, the Pixel Buds are amazing, by the way. If you have the Pixel Buds and you have, and what I, by the Pixel Buds, I don't mean the new Bluetooth that are soon to be released. I'm talking about the USB-C Pixel Buds or Pixel headphones. Maybe they're just called Pixel headphones. But when you plug those in, you get good audio quality, both in the ear and both the microphone. So those work well, and I love being able to use those to stand up, uh, to walk around during meetings, and you do need to do that. Make sure you are finding time to stand up and take a few meetings. Try using Zoom and Microsoft Teams on your Pixel phone. I think what you're going to find is it is a perfectly usable and in some ways superior over your computer because it gives you more flexibility. So really encourage you to do that. Now, on another note, though, I'm also teaching a course for another institution as a part-time faculty member. And what's interesting there is, while I have to use Zoom and Microsoft Teams, I also have to, have to use WebEx to teach that. So I, I, I would consider myself versed in 
every platform at this point. I've used Hangouts, everything. Uh, and it's been really interesting switching between them and finding a favorite. Uh, I think for me, my favorite has definitely been Microsoft Teams. I'm not a big fan of WebEx. Uh, WebEx looks like something that uh, was left over from the 2000s. But, you know, it's the tool I need to use. Now, the other thing, though, that is I've been teaching that I've found has been very beneficial, though, is I do keep all of my notes uh, for teaching, my lecture notes, my presentations in Google Sites. If you've not seen my Google Sites uh, for my classes, you can find uh, the link in the show notes. Uh, I don't have a custom URL for that. It's just the Google Sites long URL. So there's, a, a, a again, a link in the show notes so that you can see that. But I have really enjoyed using Google Sites to keep those notes. And I'm so glad I did that before COVID because I had a good bank of resources that when we took the class virtual, it was ready to go. So preparation was key to that. Um, and, and I manage the Google Sites. Anytime I'm working on that, I'm typically on my Pixel Book or my Pixel Slate. And uh, the other thing that I've found interesting in teaching, it's amazing my, stu my students are, are uh, pretty cool students. They, uh, the class that I teach is something that really requires uh, collaboration in small teams. And they themselves have found tools to figure out how to collaborate externally from the class, but also while we have class, we will break the students into groups and they'll continue their work. And one of the tools that they found was the most valuable for them was Google Duo. Of course, that made my heart happy being a Pixel user, but they love Google Duo. I've got one team that uses it exclusively for them to collaborate. And now with multiple people on Google Duo, they find that that's one of the best tools that they can use to stay in touch. So I was really excited to, to see them do that. Some of the other things I'm doing during my COVID sequestering, I'm finding time to dig into some of my hobbies. As I mentioned, video, learning how to use DaVinci Resolve 16. Uh, the question I have is, how is this thing free? This is amazing. Um, the only thing I do wish about DaVinci Resolve is uh, it is for Mac, Windows, and uh, Linux, but I think it's only for Red Hat Linux. I wish it was available for more machines, but I have a Mac, so it's perfectly fine. It is a, still a little buggy in some areas, but by and large, it is an amazing uh, video tool. So if you're looking for some way to do uh, or some tool to edit home video, uh, professional video. I mean, this is a professional video editing tool, but with a few YouTube videos that you can find online, you can use this uh, for your family projects too and do some amazing things. The other thing I'm working on is my YouTube channel is growing. There's a link in the show notes. Um, I'm posting some things, and this is on the uh, the personal blog side it's at stephencombs.com, but I'm having fun playing with video, as I mentioned earlier in the show. I also hope to get back to a book I've been writing for the last two years. Uh, two years ago, I participated in Nano. Primo. I have three quarters of a book done, and I'm hoping to be able to get back to that some sometime, and maybe uh, the COVID will allow me to do that. If not, I've got to find a schedule and get that done. I really uh, would like to do that and make sure that I, I get that complete and get that done. You, you want to, even if I don't publish this thing, I just want to say I have this thing done. And I've written books before uh, that have been technical books, um, mainly they're textbooks for college classes, but this is my first work of fiction. I would love just to put the end on it uh, and go back and edit it and just have some fun with it and see, uh, maybe self-publish or, or try. I don't know. I don't think it's good enough uh, yet. Uh, it's got a lot of work, but I do want to get back to that. I'm also back on a regular running schedule, which is great. My job typically has evening events planned, and sometimes I miss my evening runs. I am an afternoon runner, so that's my preference, and it's so good to be back on my regular run. Oh, interesting. I hear... Uh, uh, I've got some uh, pipes running. So that's the other thing about going live. You can't control anything. I also uh, venture out about once a week to get supplies. Also, when I can, I'd love to support our local economy with a takeout or drive-in stop. I would encourage you if, if you're feeling uh, comfortable with your specific situation, you're healthy, uh, if you can support your local economy. I know that uh, your restauranteurs and small um, retail folks would really appreciate that. So I would encourage you. I'm washing my hands, obviously, a lot more frequently than I ever did. And then one of the other just fun things is we, uh, my wife and I have been catching up on uh, several shows that uh, we've not been able to finish. So you know how you start and you th think, okay, we're going to binge this thing and then you never get a chance to finish it. So we are working through that. As a matter of fact, last night, uh, we took advantage of some of the opportunities that the broadcast networks and some of the uh, subscribed networks are, are allowing, which is that free month during COVID. So for instance, CBS All Access provided a free month. We got through Star Trek Picard. We finished that. 
We uh, are watching War of the Worlds and Pennyworth on Epics, which is included free. I think it's two months on YouTube TV. So if you're on YouTube TV, those are two great series to check out. And then we're also trying to finish up Man in the High Castle. We've got a few more episodes of that uh, to finish. So we are kind of finishing up our binging on shows so that we can start some new shows. And of course, through that, I'm also getting a chance to spend more time with uh, with my wife. But I think I'm enjoying that more than she is because I've invaded her workspace. She, she works from home. This is her workspace. I'm here all the time. So what I've decided to do is I'm kind of picking up on the uh, um, the lunches while I'm here, trying to make it uh, tolerable for her to have me home all the time. But I am downstairs. She's upstairs. So I think it's working. I think it's, it's, it's probably working out pretty well. So let's talk about uh, how the Pixel devices have helped. How have my Pixel phone, my Pixel book, my Pixel slate, or in your case could be an Android or Chrome OS, how are those things kind of helping us get through the COVID-19. Well, I mentioned we're watching a lot of free television um, that's provided. I'm doing that on YouTube TV on our uh, NVIDIA Shield. It is an Android TV box. I also have a Mi Box in my office so that I can watch YouTube TV. Um, so that's helping there. Uh, we already talked about um, Picard uh, on CBS All Access that I'm watching. Also started watching last night. Now, this isn't a Pixel device. But I heard that Apple TV had For All Mankind, which is an alternative take on what would happen if uh, we didn't make it to the moon first, but the Russians did. Very interesting show. I found an old Apple TV, plug that back in so we could watch that. So it's not a Pixel device, uh, but uh, sometimes you do have to break out your tech from other vendors in order to watch the things you want. Uh, I'm also using the Pixel Book, as I mentioned, and the Slate for online meetings. I have not had an issue with any of those devices, um, most like WebEx, Hangouts, um, Teams, Zoom, they all will work in a web browser and the Pixel Book and the Pixel Slate have been perfect for those when I use those. I already mentioned I use the Pixel 4 as I'm uh, attending meetings and want to walk around or stand up. Again, make sure you use that USB-C headset. My Google Assistant enabled devices, my Home Hubs, uh, my Google Minis, all of those are letting me listen to music throughout the day. It's, it's so funny because my wife upstairs will control all the speakers upstairs. I have all the ones downstairs and we'll have two things of music, but occasionally we'll listen to the same thing. We'll have everything going in in the groups uh, called that we called house and our group house on in the Google Home app covers every device. And we have, oh boy, I couldn't count. We must have at least 10 different um, uh, speaker enabled devices around the house. So when we find something we want to listen to together and jam, it's, it's pretty fun. The other thing that I've been experimenting with is uh, using, and I'm showing it on the screen here, this is the uh, Lenovo Yoga uh, tab with Google Assistant, and I've been using that to keep up with my Google News and Feedly. Uh, it's just a, a bigger screen than the Pixel. It's a uh, lighter uh, to carry around than the Pixel Book or the Pixel Slate, and it's been a pretty good device. It's not a Pixel device, but it probably is the closest to a Pixel tablet that we would ever get from Google right now, although I am curious to see about this new Chrome OS-based tablet that uh, may be coming out in a couple of weeks. We're gonna keep an eye on that, and if that comes out, I may have to uh, pick that up. I think it's the Chrome Duet, I believe, by Lenovo, another Lenovo product. I will have to say, I do like Lenovo products. The tab is a mixed bag for me. There's some things I really like about it, and then there's a few things that I think just because trying to use Android as a tablet OS is not great. And we've seen that Google is really starting to develop Chrome OS as a tablet uh, operating system. So again, I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see that uh, Lenovo Duet to see how that works in tablet mode with Chrome OS. So just a few more things here before we close up the episode. How is technology helping? How is all these Pixel devices, Android, Chrome OS, and even if you're an Apple person, how is technology helping us get through COVID-19? Well, first of all, we're probably staying in touch with others a lot more than we did in the past. Uh, for me, email is my preference. Uh, because I sit here all day and, and talk to people online. Um, it seems odd probably that I'm doing this, but I don't like that very much. I'm learning to get there. Um, but email still my preferred way, text messaging, social media. Um, I wouldn't say I'm using social media more. I might just be checking it and reviewing it more just to check on people and see how they're doing. And then of course, all these online meetings with all of these different platforms. And um, 
you know, the virtual environments like Zoom, Google Hangouts, Teams, WebEx, they're part of our normal workday. And I suspect, again, as I mentioned earlier, they're going to be a part of our workday when we go back to our regular jobs. I think what we're learning from this, and again, and I think this is another positive, is many of us can do our jobs at home. We don't need to be in an office somewhere. There's a lot we can get done. I will tell you, I think I am more productive for some tasks sitting right here. Now, a lot of my job requires me to be out in the community, uh, be visible, but there's about half my job where I know I can get more done here than I can at my office at home, at work. And I know some people get distracted by that, but uh, certain people can work uh, uh, probably better in their own locations. The other thing I've loved about our technology is makers everywhere are helping by printing mass components for face shields, uh, for our local healthcare providers, that has just been so much fun to see the maker community rally around this and say, here's what we can provide. And I feel bad sometimes. I've got a 3D printer over here. It is not operating, but I have several good friends, several acquaintances online that are doing that work. And I'm so proud of the work that they're doing. I'm doing some other things, I won't say. Uh, I just uh, am not uh, in a, I think, in a good environment where I can have the printer going while I'm working in meetings and I haven't set it up in a good location. I should probably consider that. But if you've got a 3D printer, there are lots, and I love that makers everywhere are helping. One of the other things I did talk about in my blog over at stephencombs.com was Wisecam released a firmware for their, um, their Wisecams, which is a small Wisecam. As a matter of fact, hang on. So if you're watching online, that was probably pretty fun to watch me scoot around in a chair, but I have a, a Wisecam Black right here. I wanted to put that on the screen. I did do a video uh, talking about how you can change the firmware on this device. Wise, the developer of this, knew that there was a, um, um, the, they were running out of stock on webcams. And they knew that a lot of people had this webcam, the Wisecam. This is the Wisecam Black that I'm holding. Uh, they knew they had these and they couldn't get a webcam, but they had a firmware that you could download. Uh, install that on the Wisecam and it turns the Wisecam into a webcam. And I've got several videos on that. Interesting for me was I did that, I tested it on Linux and Mac and then I was done with the video. Me, the Pixel Power Podcast host guy did not ch t test this out on Chrome OS. Uh, so I quickly did a follow up. Uh, somebody pointed out to me that they thought it was odd. I did not test this on Chrome OS. So I did a follow-up video. Both of those are over on the website at stephencombs.com. And I did put the one for Chrome OS at the Pixel Power Podcast. Uh, dot com site. So go to pixelpowerpodcast.com and you'll find a post, not a um, not an episode post, but just a regular post where I share the video about testing that on Chrome OS. And I won't spoil it, uh, but let's just say the uh, results were mixed. So check out the video if you want to see that. So again, I love that a company is trying to help out by providing a firmware update so that you, if you're short on webcams, you don't have a webcam, you want to donate this webcam to somebody, you can do that. Although you're going to have some mixed results as you'll find in my video. The other thing that uh, technology is helping in the way of Chrome OS is that uh, Chrome OS 82 is being skipped and Google decided that their employees should focus on bug fixes. They're gonna skip Chrome OS 82 and they're gonna to jump to 83. So it was a great way uh, for them to allow their employees, their developers to take a pause, take a breather. This is likely because they need to work from home. There's probably some things that make it easier and we're not gonna see Chrome OS 82. We're probably gonna see the next version at 83. That's what we're hearing online. Also, uh, technology is helping out, especially from Google. Google Fi is temporarily doubling data limits for customers uh, amid the co coronavirus pandemic. And many other mobile and internet providers are doing the same. For instance, I use Xfinity and they have uh, removed the caps, which I think was uh, the right thing to do. So I, I applaud those companies that are doing that. And we don't always applaud our internet providers, uh, but we know that that is something they should be doing. Google is using data analytics for location from location tracking to help understand the spread of the virus and predict cases nationally. I know one of the things I have is the Google rewards on my phone. And what's interesting is I am getting surveys on occasion that says, hey, how are you feeling? Uh, have you had a temperature? Do you know anybody that has a temperature? So they're using that data. And I think it's this is the point where we should probably be contributing. And it's helping us 
um, locate the spread uh, of, of the coronavirus and helping us provide feedback. Again, they're also using the uh, Google Fi and the, uh, or the FIT data from this and the location data to help understand how the coronavirus is spreading. So if you are so inclined to make sure you enable location services, because this is a time when that can really help. And let's face it, none of us are really going anywhere except our home. They already have that address, but it is a great way to help them. Um, so those are some of the ways that technology that I've captured is helping us get through this. If you have other ways that technology is helping us get through the COVID-19 that I didn't mention, make sure you drop a comment uh, below this live, YouTube live if you'd like, or you can also send me, uh, send me that feedback via the information I'll share at the end of the episode. And with that, we are almost done with the end of the episode. The only thing I wanna say is, let's talk about what's holding us back. Um, what's, what's not getting us to work faster? What are some ways that technology could uh, be better through this? So first of all, um, testing is becoming easier, but it's still not easy enough. We're almost there. Uh, swabbing is, is happening now, but uh, results could come back faster. And I think we're starting to see that now. We're starting to get faster results. We're also learning new things we need to do, like wash our hands, social distancing, masks, uh, what's next? I'm afraid to ask, actually. Uh, but these are the things that we need to be doing. These are probably the things that we're going to continue to do. Uh, and uh, these are things that as we think about going back to work later, it's probably going to probably going to hold us back a little bit. Right. And, you know, the thing that's really holding us back is we still don't know when this thing will be over. Uh, as I say this, as I record this episode, we are in uh, it's April 11th. We are in what we're supposed to be our week to flatten the curve nationally. We will see next week if that were the case. Uh, indication is if you're listening to the news is we just don't know. And I think that's what's scary about this is we just don't know. The best thing you can do though, best thing you can do is find yourself a hobby. And that's what I want to come back to. The, this episode was really focused on me catching up with you uh, to let you know the things I'm doing. Pick up a hobby while you're sitting at home. Don't just watch TV. Do things like uh, learning new tech. Learn how to use and take advantage of your devices. Uh, learn the things that your Pixel phone can do. Uh, take some time to learn what your Pixel Slate, your Pixel Book can do beyond just the normal things that you do. Dive into Linux. Uh, these Pixel books and Pixel slates have Linux. Dive into those. I've got some resources online at pixelpowerpodcast.com slash Linux. If you want to learn how to use Linux on your Pixel book or Pixel slates, it'd be a good time to do that. Hey, Lego, you can't go wrong with Lego. I'm an old Lego guy. We've already been doing some sets around the house. There are puzzles. Instead of big puzzles on table, we do big Lego models. What are you going to do? Uh, make sure you're reading. Make sure you're exercising and running. Find something other than watching the news. Uh, that will just drive you crazy. Uh, and you need to get your mind off of this. So uh, please find things to do because if you don't, your day is going to be long and it's going to be very scary. So find some things to do. Keep your mind off of it. Uh, a lot of great stuff on YouTube to get you going. If you're interested in any hobby, this is the time to do it. So that's my world. What does yours look like? How are Pixel Power devices helping you during this time? I'd love for you to drop me an email and or you can comment on the subreddit or you can send me a voicemail links for all of those are in the show notes they're also at pixelpowerpodcast.com they'll also be below in the comments if you're watching on youtube live and again as i mentioned there's no addendum for this episode so this is it this is our first live stream episode and again i looked in the chat room yes absolutely nobody in the chat room because i didn't tell anybody i was doing this but uh it was a lot of fun to try this we'll see how it goes i'm going to uh, close the episode now and say, uh, take care of yourself. Make sure you wash your hands. And then, uh, you know, again, while you have some free time, let me know you're out there. So again, use the, use the methods that I have on the website to let me know you're out there. Let me know if you watch the live stream, how was it? It, uh, you know, it's just a talking head at this point. Uh, it's not different than listening to the podcast, but at least I had some visuals up here that I could show you. So, uh, thank you for listening to episode four. 45 of the Pixel Power Podcast, and uh, I hope to be back in a couple of weeks with a regular episode with our regular format that will include the addendum. So thanks for listening.